CataractCoach.com. Cataract surgery with a seton tube. The patient already has a glaucoma seton tube in the eye. How are you going to do the surgery? Now, you can see here there's a lot of sneaky there of the iris on the anterior lens capsule. There's a peripheral iridotomy there on the right-hand side of the screen. The patient's 12 o'clock. And also in the patient's supero-temporal quadrant, there is a tube, a seton tube, probably an omid valve. Now, making the main incision here, we obviously need to start off by breaking those sinicae. Nice and easy. I like this technique here with a chopper or other second instrument. Slowly, slowly, slowly peeling it off of the anterior lens capsule. You can also do a little bit more dissection with viscoelastic. If there's a membrane there, and there may be, you can actually just use your caps or excess forceps and grab that membrane and peel it right off. I think there's a membrane right there on your screen, the left side of that rexus. So now starting off with the rexus here and getting it flipped over, very good. I agree you want a good size rexus. I want at least a five millimeter rexus here. Patient may get sneaky in the post-op period. Remember, sneaky is likely to happen of the iris sticking to the anterior lens capsule, but the iris is probably not going to stick to the surface of your hydrophobic acrylic IOL. Now, rexus has been completed there. What is different by having the seton tube in the eye? Well, think about it. When you do normal phaco, there's one source of uh, fluid inflow, right? That's your BSS bottle. That's all you got. One source. What are the sources of outflow? In a normal case, it's what you aspirate out the phaco tip, correct? And then also what you lose via leakage from the incisions. Well, in this case, there's extra leakage. You got a little bit of leakage of fluid coming out the main incision, a little bit of leakage of fluid coming out the paracentesis, and you've got even more leakage of fluid going through that seton, that tube, the almond valve. So you've got to change your fluidic settings here. Be very cautious. Now, I like this chop technique here. Beautifully done. Great job by the surgeon here. And remove this nucleus so you may have more anterior chamber instability. Now, some surgeons like to block off that seton tube as the surgery is being done. Maybe put some viscoelastic around there. But I agree with this surgeon. You don't have to do all of that. You can just do your case as regular, maybe increase the infusion pressure, maybe decrease your outflow. Remember, you need a balance of the inflow fluid versus the outflow fluid. So if you increase your, your outflow fluid like we have here, well, maybe let's increase the inflow fluid, but also decrease the other outflow, which is obviously leaky incisions, but also the amount of fluid you aspirate through the phaco probe itself. And once you do that, you can have a lot more stability and a lot more control here. So in a case like this, look at the nucleus is mostly removed. Try to get that epinuclear shell out, perhaps, and then clean this up and finish the case. I also like to do one further step, which is to ensure this, the continued function of that almond valve or seton or, or tube shunt. At the end of the case, when the eye is already in the bag and I think I'm done with the surgery, to put a little triamcillin in the anterior chamber, and you can see those particles. And then once you see those particles, you can increase the IOP by hydrating uh, inside the anterior chamber with the paracentesis with BSS. And once the IOP goes up, do you see the triamcillin particles flow out into that tube and into the that space there in the subconjunctival subtenons area? And that's what you want to verify. So here you go. At the end of the case, getting the IOL in the bag. And again, I like to do that triamcillin load um, outflow verification just to be sure. Yeah, I'm a little bit special. I, I told you already I'm a special snowflake. So now going behind here to the optic, remove the viscoelastic, that's an important step. Especially if you injected a lot of viscoelastic in or around that tube, make sure you aspirate that out fully. You don't want to have viscoelastic clogging up that seton tube there. You don't want to impede outflow. So nicely removed here, cleaning up all that viscoelastic, getting it out of the eye. That looks great. In a case like this, should you put a suture in? If you want to, you can. You may not necessarily need to. But again, beautiful result here. Just keep in mind, fluidic balance is the key. What's the inflow fluid? What's the outflow? Having the seton increases the outflow, so balance it out. And check out our podcast, the top podcast in all about ophthalmology. It'll teach you how to be a more successful ophthalmologist. And it's free!